Okay. All right. Well, we're still on. All right. Good. Um, busy, 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 busy afternoon. And um, trying to stay warm. And thank God the sun has come out. As a matter of fact, the, the uh, weather's not hard to touch. You know, touch your, touch your skin. It's not bad. Anyway, I, I was um, curious about this whole thing about T.D. Jakes. Um, T.D. Jakes just recently, um, well, he took, he took the vaccine, right? And um, I'm not going to say much about that. He can do whatever he wants to. But here's the thing. They were just talking about this and they were saying that um, not only is he doing it, but a number of evangelicals and pastors and teachers are doing this. And now it begins, kind of concerns me because the church now is taking a position, many of the churches are taking a position on the fact that, all right, this is something good to do for the community. So community-oriented churches are taking a stand for what they think is best for the community. And I guess that kind of concerns me because the church should be, in my opinion, an organization that is about faith in Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, and... Um, that kind of thing. And I know, again, traditionally churches have also been involved in politics. And so, yeah, they've spoken on social issues. But, I, you know, again, I know that churches also have been known to say a few words about health. But when it comes down to it, does the church really have the authority to speak on behalf of the health choices of individuals? And uh, is, that a, is that a safe thing to do? You know, when it comes down to it, I, you know, and I got to be very careful because we're on this platform. But when it comes down to it, is it safe for the church to actually authorize um, a medical procedure, you know, versus not authorizing it, right? I don't know if the church has the authority of the voice to actually speak from a medical perspective. Now, if you would ask me anything about the book of Genesis, I'd be able to tell you you'd ask me to name the books of the Bible, I'd be able to do that. You'd ask me to oh, comment on the life of David, the life of Paul, the life of Jesus Christ, I'd be able to do that. But for me to comment on medical, give medical advice is really not my place to do so. Uh, that's the reason I always say, you know, again, as, I, as I'm coming to you, you know, I'm not a doctor if I do say anything that may influence your decision. But I wouldn't dare want to influence your decision for something that I'm not sure about. And um, especially if it's experimental, you know, if, especially if it is, I, I'm not qualified to do that. And I hope that's acceptable to you too for me to say that, but I'm not, you know, so I just feel like when I saw that happen with, um, the Jake's situation, and I know again, Jake's has been very questionable and not really reliable, even in terms of following his ministry. 
because there there are a number of things that I've objected to over the years when it comes down to Jake's. But at the same time, it is someone who has a lot of influence. And so here's the thing. I'm curious, why are the people who are like the Fauci's and other people like that so interested now in going to the black church. Not just the black church, but then in the church in general. And uh, from what I understand, there was a panel discussion uh, with a number of people at the church. Um, and I think Fauci was one of them on the panel speaking to the black community. And this is really why, you know, I'm really kind of coming out on this because I did, I mean, they did say it was to the black community specifically, right? They didn't just um, make it in general. But it seems like every time they want to do something, they go and get a celebrity of some sort or someone who has a voice in the community. Uh, and then they will... Um, I don't know whether or not it. they feel like when the, when someone comes to them and asks them to do something, then it seems like that person who is the black celebrity or whatever, the kind of uh, like T.D. Jakes or something, they feel so, um, I don't, I, I suppose they feel flattered by someone coming to them to ask them to do something like that. And they don't know how to resist it. Uh, case in point, let me go to Spike Lee, right? Spike Lee, Spike Lee came out and uh, he came out and did his thing, right? And we know Hank Aaron, what happened to him, of course. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, they go to these people who have these voices in the community of color, black, brown, and even white people, you know, admire T.D. Jakes and Spike Lee and then they go to them and then um, they pull them into this um, procedure right a medical this this area this area that's foreign to them this platform put them on a platform for just about everything it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that we're taking advice right now from someone who has no experience in medicine whatsoever, and yet that person is telling us now we need to have um, three shots instead of uh, two, you know. So, it, it you know, in my opinion, that that's kind of crazy, right? So I just, you know, got to be careful what you say on this platform. But again, when it, when it comes down to uh, T.D. Jakes, I, I would say if I were into him, if I were into T.D. Jakes, it would be very disappointing for me. It would be very disappointing to me. But but then at the same time, you know, when Tyler Perry was at his church and he got tapped on the head and passed out in the pulpit, shaking and trembling and foaming at the mouth because Tyler Perry was going to give him a million dollars, then I realized what he really was about, you know, so. Um, I don't know. So I, I, I can say, you know, as I look at this whole thing, it really is something to be questioned. Um, should that happen? Now, if, if this is going to be the course that we're going to be going, just want, want you to kind of think about this. If we're going to continue going down this path, then the logical assumption that, or the logical conclusion that anyone can draw is that the church will be the ultimate helper when it comes to introducing the mark of the beast. And I guess when I think about that, I never thought of it that way. I never really thought of the church introducing the mark of the beast. It never, you know, I didn't really think about, 
I know that the the um, mark of the beast will be a religious kind of symbol too, because we do know that he uh, that that the people not only are guilty for receiving the mark, but they are also going to be guilty for worshiping the beast. And well, we live in this. We live in so close to this particular time when. The Bible says he will cause all small and great to receive the mark. Well, how would he do that? How would he do that? He would have to infiltrate every facet of society. He would have to control every voice that comes out of Hollywood, that comes out of the sports arena, that comes out of television, radio, media, he would have to control every voice that comes out of even the church itself. And every person would have to turn away from the Lord and give total praise to this person. And it's almost lining up that way. When I, when I look at this, it's incredible the amount of power that these... Um, these people today even have. It, it really is incredible. It's quite, quite remarkable to just think about these people uh, who are on television, the celebrities that no one, no, have you heard of anyone come out and say in the celebrity world that um, it's a positive for them to have a, a, a separate opinion from anything else, you know? I haven't heard of one person who has actually come out and said the anything opposite of what is currently going on today. Hold on, I'm got I gotta go into this house here, guys. So you know, as I uh <laughs> you know, <laughs> I gotta tell you. Okay. I gotta tell you guys, you know, um as we As we move farther and farther down this road that we're on, this dystopian road, we are seeing um, massive, massive control. Control over the media, uh, the, oh, I don't know, you know, the, the media, the, uh, the, just the decisions of men, the institutions that we have. I mean, just think about it. No one can even get, a, um, get any papers now that don't have markings on it, reminding us that we're in, a, in the middle of uh, the pandem pandemic or pandemic or whatever you want to call it. No one actually can actually get a, a, a driver's license without recognizing or bowing to the beast, right? It's, it's incredible. You won't be able to travel. You won't be able to buy food, sell, or anything right now unless you, um, you know, surrender your will to that beast. So I'm just, you know, it's amazing the time that we live in. It really is. Let me see here. I've got to I've got to do some separating here guys. Give me a minute here. Yeah, it's quite amazing the time that we live in and um the power that and the influence that is going out throughout the entire world, right? And so as we're seeing all of this happen, the big question that still remains is um is the church going to be involved in this? Or will there be a rapture? Will the church leave before the church becomes part of the uh, final, well, you know, this whole thing? And so that's what we're looking at. We're looking at something here that I never thought I'd see, you know, not just celebrities, but 
men of the cloth, church people, pushing for something that, um, well, is absolutely outside of their field, right? And so that's what we're seeing. And so um, it becomes a question of whether or not we will even be here. So, you know, those, those are my thoughts about it. Will we even be here in that last day? But of course, hold on, let me, let me get this straightened out here, guys. It looks like, looks like we're not getting a ride home anytime soon. <laughs> I just hope, I hope we get a ride home. You know, I, I hope we do very soon. But it looks like we're not. And so, um, we have some very, very dark times ahead. <laughs> yeah, I, I am distracted. Trying to, trying to count out some uh, food here. My wife and my, my son is supposed to be in a big play tonight and only have a few hours to get ready. And uh, he's going to uh, be performing at his school. And we'll see what happens with that. So I've got to go pick up the wife. Anyway, yeah. So... Um, what do you guys think? Do you think that uh, we are going to have the Antichrist uh, to uh, to be part of the church? Will he be? Will Satan himself be sitting in the church? I imagine he already is sitting in the church, right? And so we know that Satan is sitting sitting in the church. But the big question is, will we be gone before that? You know, or will the church actually be the be the uh, be one of the promoters of the uh, of the Antichrist? Now, as I think about the church, the seven churches, there are seven churches according to uh, scripture that were spoken of in the Book of Revelation. And one of those churches actually was given the opportunity of, you know, uh, not going through the, the hour of testing that the whole world would go through. And so I'm thinking that, yeah, the hour of testing that the whole world will go through will be that time when the Antichrist will be on the earth. But there will be one church that will be taken out, or at least God said he'd spare that, spare them from that. And so I'm thinking there may be a separation between those who really believe in the, in the apostate church. And so the apostate church will be here. But what will happen to the real saints? I, I'm sure the real saints won't take the mark. I'm sure the real saints will begin to preach and get louder and louder against this Antichrist, the mark of the beast. What will happen to them? What will become of them? Um, will, there, will that many heads be cut off? Could it be that much bloodshed? Or will uh, God intervene during that time and send his angels to uh, rapture them away? You know, those are it's a, it's a very serious question. But when I saw T.D. Jakes actually with his face covered and um, receiving his dose of you know what, um, I just couldn't believe it. I said, you know, there's no way that he could um, not know. And if he does know, then he's guilty. And if he is guilty, then he is really choosing to 
have the pleasures of this world over the pleasures of the kingdom of God. And that is so, so, so. I, there's no words for it, guys. There's really no words for it. Would you choose, would you choose to have the pleasures of this world over the pleasures of the kingdom to come that will never end? Just think about that. Would you, would you do that? I mean, no amount of money on this world could cause me to want to lose my soul. But it's like what Jesus said, you will either, um, well, you know, Jesus was talking about that no man can serve two masters. You either love one or hate the other. And that's what's happening. You can't serve two masters. And right now, these people are coming out in the open Showing what, showing what side they're on. You know, it's kind of like, um, now you can see the devils real good. You can see who the devils really are. Just, let's just, you know, let's just take, for instance, and the PSYOP that just happened, right? Well, we know that there were seven conservatives who were rhinos, right? And those conservatives outed themselves during this whole sham of an impeachment trial. And this, this thing just revealed who they are. Now there may be some roaches still hiding in the, you know, hiding in the dark, but we do know who those roaches are now that just showed them, showed their true colors. Well, that's what's happening now in the entertainment world. That's what's happening now in the Christian world. That's what's happening now all over. The sheep and the goats are being separated. And and I'm, I'm not, you know, the guy, come on now. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not stumping for Trump. I'm not a Trump, Trumpster. No, I'm just telling you that, that as I, as I think about this, that there is there is a division because whether or not you were for Trump or not, that's not it. The point that I'm saying is that when the people were following Trump, they were not following Trump. They were following an idea and they were following an idea that they thought were the right idea. But, you know, of course, those people were wrong, you know, so we were all wrong. And so there are some people, again, who or diehard Trump fans, but they're really not after Trump. I believe that a lot of people wanted things to be made right in this country. And I think that a lot of people did follow him for those reasons. And that that's what it was. It was more like the Christian right were following him. And I think, again, the Christian right were led like Pied Piper, led like uh, mice uh, to their end with the Pied Piper piping. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But in the long run, we do know that the, the people who are genuine are, are showing their true colors in either regard. There is a left and there is a right. Jesus said, I will separate you from the sheep and the goat. There are going to be those who are put on the left hand of God and there is going to be those who put on the right hand. So we have to say it, it really is true. And I don't, I don't become disoriented about it just because one person that we, we were kind of thinking that he, God might use him in a, in a glorious way has not turned out to be who he thought he was. The point that I'm saying though is that people in, are, are beginning to identify who they are. I mean, guys, look, if I were after money, um, guys, I, I would I would change my tune in a heartbeat, and I would start talking all of the talking points that these people want me to say. But you know, I'm not. That I'm not really after the money. Um, you know, so I'm. You know, I, it would be nice to get a couple of bucks, but that's not. You're not gonna get that from here. Truth does not pay. 
you won't you won't get you won't get paid for the truth, you know, here. <laughs> but when it comes down to people like TD Jakes, he's getting paid big time. And people who like uh, all of these celebrities who've made millions and billions of dollars, you're just not going to make that kind of money and you, you're going to be right with God. You, it's true. You can serve. You can serve God and mammon. Anyway, it's the thought. Guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'm, I've got to get going. Uh, like I said, tonight we, we've got a special night. i got to get it with my wife and uh, check her out get her pick her up from work she says she wants me to come pick her up she has her car but she wants me to pick her up so we're gonna make it a special night huh and uh, we're gonna see our, our youngest son perform tonight pray for us and i pray for you um that jesus comes soon and that this nightmare will be over and uh, also that you be protected during the, even these particular times Remember that Jesus is the light of the world and the truth. She'll set you free. God bless.